Hello my friends. Welcome back to another art session with me. I'm Marcy and this is Prince and Paints. It's really good to see you all again. So, oh, what a week I had guys. I was really sick with strep and I was running fevers and just not myself. I lost my voice for a few days. Uh, it's still raspy so I'm, I might whisper a little here and there just to keep my voice calm but I did want to make this video and get it out before the solar eclipse. I was super inspired by doing a mandala that was geared towards the upcoming solar eclipse on April 8th. And that's what we're gonna do today, guys. So if you are interested in doing a celestial type of mandala, stay with me and let's get to it. Okay, guys, so yes, we're gonna go and try to do a like celestial slash mandala and have it incorporate some colors that go with uh, planets and some elements with dotting and things like that so <laughs> we'll see how it goes i am going to be doing this on a mdf hardboard this is a 10 inch mdf i did paint this background a prussian blue color it is more on the darker navy blue color. It may look black in the video, but if I hold a black card against it, you do see the difference, okay? I know my background looks different today, guys. Normally I have the wood, and I really just, when I started feeling better, I did a lot of spring cleaning and a lot of dusting, and I decided to take the wood away for a few videos and see how well I like it. So the background is a little different so don't be thrown off by it. So I do have my mandala, I said, a 10 inch mandala and I mapped out my guidelines with my ruler. If you want to use a compass go right ahead. And I also used my 16 segment, so these are the segments for my vertical lines. And when I do that, I just place it on the center like so. I do a quick little tick mark in the center. I don't come all the way out. And then I use my ruler to make my segments. I'm also going to be using this cool stencil that I made. I'll make sure that I have a PDF available for you to download. So if you want to use this, you can. It will be free for you guys to this time around, okay? And so we're gonna line this up like that. So I'm gonna line it up with my center circle. You should be able to line it up with, I didn't do the inner portion, so if you did, it would be three lines out. We're not going to do anything in there because we're doing the moon faces. And we're gonna do something with a paint technique that looks like the totality of the actual solar eclipse. We're gonna have our moon phases here and we're gonna also incorporate a, a design with doing the solar eclipse. I'm gonna line up that and I'm gonna make sure that these other moons are lined up to where this cross line across here is centered with the other moons. And that'll be our first part of mapping out our, our little designs. You may come a little bit out from here. Mine's a little bit short, I could see. That's okay though. I can always make it a little bit shorter. So I'm going to do that. And this, like I said, this is just mapping out. This first portion is going to be mapping out our guidelines, our segment lines, and then just this simple stencil line. So that's what you should have, something like that. 
All right, if you want to kind of sketch that out, it's okay. I think it looks perfect the way it is. So again, I'll have this available for free for you guys. If you do have a Cricut, you can always pop this in as a PNG and cut something out yourself like this. This is just on the Mylar stencil plastic that I usually use. Okay, so now what we want to do is we're going to, I'm going to show you some of the items that we're going to use for the video. We obviously are going to use our Prussian blue, so that's our main color on here. We are, however, going to use the Prussian blue, and we're going to make six different monochromatic gradient shades of this color. All I did, you can see the colors in the gradient, all I did was add a little bit of this to each pot. If you don't know how to do this, the, a really good thorough way to do this, you can always watch my video. I'll leave a card up above here on um, how to mix monochromatic paints. All right. But so what I did is I added a little bit in each one. And then as I went along and mixed them, I added a little bit of white and I kept going with it to make from dark to light. So this is a little bit lighter than this color per se. It looks really dark in here, but it is this color. So you could see the color gradients. And this is gonna act as just our background area because what we really want to achieve in this type of design is to make this totality here, this moon phase, pop out at us. So this is gonna be like colors that remind me of being in outer space and just planets, stars, you name it. So we're going to do a nice blue hue and I felt like this color that I used on the background would work the best. So I just added titanium white with this together to make these. And I have six of them. So I'm going to put this aside for now. Now because we have eight planets I grew up with nine. Nowadays, we have eight planets. And because of the even numbers of that, I felt like it's going to work out better in our favor instead of trying to go with the nine. So we're going to be able to fit four planets on this side and four on this side. And then they're going to act as if they're floating around in outer space in our rotation with this whole uh, moon phase totality thing. So the colors I'm going to be using for all of these, I'll show you real quick. I'm going to use these two colors, which is the Hosser medium green and the citron green. What we're going to do is make like a marble color. So we'll put a little bit of this in the paint tray and then a little bit of this and swirl it around. And so by using these two, we can uh, create this really cool marble effect. Because if you do notice that on a lot of planets, they don't have one solid color. They do have a lot of, so we know, pictures that we've seen. They do have like imperfections, they have shadows, they have all sorts of things. And so looking at every chart online I could possibly find, <laughs> I found that these colors work the best for just a palette, but also just in general, breaking up the idea of just one continuous color for everything else. For Mercury, we're going to use the greens, okay? So I'm going to go in order as far as like from the sun to further out. So we're going to go with Mercury and then we have Venus. So with Venus, I felt we should go with a purple color. So we're going to go with two different kinds of tones of purple. So we're going to go with purple pizzazz, which is our straight up, you know, purple is purple. And then we're going to go with periwinkle, which is the purple hue, but it's very cool and it has a lot of blue into it. Again, these two we're going to mix again and make like a swirl effect as well. Okay, so these are for Venus. And then of course we have Earth. <laughs> so we're going to go with our, oh, actually we're not going to do sapphire. We're going to go with this one. So we're going to go with Indian turquoise, 
Now obviously if you don't have these colors, make do with what you have. I'm just gonna, I found that these looked kind of the nicest when all together as a family. So Indian turquoise, and then I'm also gonna go back into my Hosser medium green. So I'm gonna use these two for earth. And then Mars. Mars gets its own color because it's cool. Primary red. Voila, that's it. Primary red. Jupiter. So we're going to go with oranges for Jupiter. Going to go with bright orange. And I'm also going to mix it with a little bit of honey brown to get that marbleized swirl. Then we've got Saturn. So Saturn's going to be saffron yellow. You can always use cadmium yellow, a lemon yellow, any of those kind of colors and honey brown. If you want to use something else that's a little bit darker with a little bit more contrast, I just wanted a subtle swirl to mine. I didn't want it to be very dominant, so um, we could do those. That's for Saturn. For Uranus, we have turquoise again, so we're just going to do the turquoise, but I'm also going to mix a little bit of titanium white with that one. And then the last one is Neptune. So Neptune, I'm going to do mostly sapphire with a little bit of purple pizzazz throughout it, but mostly sapphire. So those are all of our colors that we have for our planets. We have our monochromatic colors of our Prussian blue. We will also probably just use Prussian blue just as is, and it'll leave like a nice texture on color. It's the same colors. We'll play around with that and see how that looks. One more thing I'm gonna probably wanna do, actually I have two. I have some metallics. The metallics I'm gonna use is the champagne gold and the dazzling metallics. I like this subtle gold color, it's not so yellow. And I'm gonna use this kinda to mimic the stars in the sky. And the last one, which is a homemade color I have, is my mica powders and it's the universal blue. I haven't figured out how to use this one yet, but it is a really cool sparkly blue color. And so I'm gonna try to incorporate that. It might be some top dots, might do some swooshes with it, I'm not sure. If you don't have that, you can always try to find um, maybe the dazzling metallics in a blue color. And that's it for the paints, guys. Okay, so my other tools, obviously, is a paint tray I'm going to use. I might use some pouring medium to thin out my paints. You can use Floetrol. You can even use some water, as long as it's a tiny little drop. Um, I'm going to use my happy dotting tools. And then I'm also going to be using this brush set. I actually have my DTs brushes and these are to make our swooshes. They have this dark blue tip to them. You can use Utangs. You can use any kind of brush that's long. We are working on a smaller scale so keep that in mind. You really don't want to be using the number three or even the two. Way too big. When you're making your swooshes they're gonna get real chunky and big. We want to keep it small. I would suggest using probably like the three zero or the two zero, or at least the zero. Stick with those three, you'll be on safe side. I also bought this set of brushes. These I got from Walmart for a couple bucks and they're basic standard nylon brushes for acrylic paints. I'm not gonna use this one per se because it's very, I just don't like these leave lots of bristles everywhere and we're not using anything big like this. So I'm gonna put that aside. However, you usually get, in this set, you usually get two round brushes, actually three, and one square or two, two squared brushes. I'm gonna use the largest square brush today, so that's what we're going to be using. I'm gonna show you a technique. I actually call it dry painting, but I know it's not that, but you'll understand why I say that. And then like you have these, this is what we used for making our daisy flowers in the other tutorial. I might use this little small one here to do some of my pulls and my swooshes, okay? 
So if you have a small brush like this, then by all means use that. Try that out. Or like I said, you can always use one of these. The trick is that these are a little bit longer. So you're not going to want to push down as much. You push down and then pull up. So I'm going to use this today. I'm going to try it. I also have my little dotting tool that I came with the set with the happy dotting. So I'll try that out today. And uh, if you don't have those, you can always use the stylist. Okay. Um, and I think that's it. That's all we're going to do for today. So don't mind me with my cough drops. I have to have them. Obviously, I start coughing too much. So let's get started on this one. So I have this mapped out. I want to focus on doing this portion first, and then we can go into doing the outside parts first. So um, what we're going to want to do, is I'm going to use my S2. You can also use, actually, am I going to use my S2? Maybe I'll use my, no, nah, I'll do S2. I'm going to use S2. I was going to say, let's use a smaller tip and do this because what we're going to want to do first is outline these moons and then we're going to fill them in. If you're familiar with me doing my Tree of Life tutorial, I did something similar to where we filled in with different variation size dots. So these outer parts, that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to go in and do something cool in the center here with our brush. I think the S2 might work well. If you don't have this, you can always use, you know how most of them have the one side and then the other one gets bigger? Use the smaller side. It's about probably about the same size, I'd say, size two. We'll see how this works out. I'm gonna get a little bit of my titanium white and put some in my tray. I'm gonna add one drop of water. I'm gonna get out a wipe, paper towel, whatever it is you're gonna use. So I can keep my brushes clean. And so basically what we're gonna do in this first portion, guys, is I'm just gonna go in with my tool. Start on the tip of one of the corners and start dotting the outer perimeters. When I do these dots, I'm going to make sure that when I dot, I'm putting that dot in the center of that line. That makes sense. To show you. So when I dot, it's in it oh, it's going down the center of that line and then going back around. Let's clean that up real quick. Oopsies. Oh. You ever notice when you get sick, like real sick, you're just so scatterbrained and so spacey? I've been trying to make this video for three days now. Because <laughs> I'm just, I have about two of these that I've wasted already. And I just can't, I can't focus. I don't know what it is. Last time I felt like this was when I was pregnant. It's crazy. All right. So, we're going to keep trying to do this. We're going to dot these all the way around. I hope everyone enjoyed their St. Patrick's Day, if you celebrate it. We had a lot of fun since it fell on the weekend. We, our little town we live in had a parade. It was the first one they've ever done. And it was an amazing outcome. I gotta say, I live in a small town. I don't live in a big city. I used to, but it's so nice to see the community come together. Ever since COVID, everybody like, they just keep to themselves and nobody goes out anymore. Nobody really does anything anymore, at least in my eyes they don't. And so it was really nice to see everyone 
I saw lots of friends. I saw lots of people I knew from school or like my kids' schools. And it was just a really good time. We had a really good time. And they had like things for little kids. They were tossing candy. And it just reminded me of my childhood in the 80s. It was like really quite a nostalgic feel to it. It was a really good day. And then, of course, Monday came and we got strapped. <laughs> Probably got sick from being out with all the people. <laughs> uh, it was still a lot of fun, though. I hope you all had a great day and enjoyed it. If you do, celebrate it. Yeah. next holiday that comes up for us in the States is Easter, if you do celebrate that too. Not everybody does. I do. But that's coming up soon, so the kids are going to be on a nice little break from school. So that should be fun. I'm excited for this solar eclipse though. So did you guys know, believe it or not, that the last time we had one was in August of 2017. And before that, it was actually in February of 1979. It's almost 20 years ago now from the last one. That's amazing. Uh, and I think before that, when was it? I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know. I know the next one they said. So basically, when they say full to to totality, that means that the moon, the moon has to be in a new moon, first of all. So when that happens, and then and it has to be perfectly aligned with the Earth and the sun. And that's what creates the solar eclipse. To have full totality, you have to be down the center of the path. Unfortunately, because the path is going from, I think it's coming up from Texas, shooting across through Illinois, a little bit of uh, Missouri, I think, into Ohio, across the Great Lakes, and then all the way up through New York and into Maine. So that's that. The last one they had... I believe was from Oregon to South Carolina and you have to be down the center of that path line to be able to see full totality and I think they said roughly it happens about every it happens about four minutes you get full totality and that's when you see the ring of fire which is so cool I'm all about astronomy and science I'm a big science nerd I love history. I love it all. So I find it fascinating, especially being a photographer. I love to be out there taking shots of the night sky and I have my telescope. <laughs> Lately I've been painting more, so I have to dust those things off. But I do love it. I do remember the one in August of 2017. We were all home that day, and I remember everybody was scrambling to find glasses. And we couldn't find them anywhere, and we were so disappointed because we really wanted to show our son, he was only three years old then, what it was all about. And we were excited, and, and of course we couldn't find glasses. They were sold out everywhere. And my husband, that man, <laughs> went to, like, everywhere he could go to. He wound up spending, like, $30 on a pair of these welding type of, like, goggle things. <laughs> and we were able to see it with those. I think we still have them, which is cool. But he saved the day that, that was cool. He saved the day that day. <clears throat> I 
And then, so this one, since we live on the East Coast, so we're more like near New York City, where I live, and we're not in the path. It goes out where Pittsburgh is, which is on the west side of Pennsylvania. Yeah, unfortunately, we won't see the full totality. We'll see a partial, but we'll still get to see something. I'm going to go to my favorite place that I always love, and it's a really nice lookout point. And from there, I'm going to check out the solar eclipse. Or any of you, my viewers, live in the states where you're actually in the path and you're going to be seeing it. I'd like to, it would be cool to find out if you have any events in your towns or your cities and if you're going to be going. And it must be really exciting. I know everything gets so strange when it happens too. Birds stop chirping and animals act strange and it gets super quiet which is so fascinating. And I think the, the next one they said isn't going to be until, I think they said 2044, I think. I don't know how they know these things, but I guess calculating when the next cycle will be. That's a long ways from now. I don't know if in my lifetime I've ever experienced being in the path of the full totality. Where I live, it never really goes through our state like that. I have a lot of photographer friends who live out west, They're like nomads. They just drive around and they live in little caravan things and they, they do workshops and they take photographs, landscapes, they do all sorts of stuff. And they're always chasing those things. And getting the best pictures. Yeah, I love science though. I love everything about space and I'm always following when NASA is doing things and sending up new rockets and it's really interesting and fun to watch that stuff. I love history too. I don't know about you guys. My favorite show lately it's been more than a year, but I love watching The Unexplained with William Shatner. I love that show. I love how they have so many just crazy unexplained things going on in this world. It's really interesting. It's better than watching all that jargon reality TV, that's for sure. Usually I'm just painting, so I'm not even watching. I'm the kind of person that just puts the TV on as noise in the background. Especially if I'm home alone or something. But I really don't watch it as much. I, sometimes I may binge and watch shows while I'm painting. But I don't really sit down all day and do that. Alright, we're almost done here. These don't have to be perfect every single dot, obviously. I would just try to make the ones that look a little tinier. Fill them back in with some paint. But for the most part, we're just going to do this outline like this. I was actually, I'm always on YouTube, obviously, because I make videos. 
but I saw some crazy weird, I don't even know, I can't even, <laughs> I probably shouldn't even go there with that, but weird conspiracies about this, this solar eclipse and how people are questioning how they've been seeing a lot more military personnel going to the certain points where the event's going to happen, like in every city and state and having them all there and they're telling them to stock up on enough food for two weeks and as if something crazy is going to happen, the sun's going to blow up, I have no idea. I, <laughs> those things are funny. They are like reading those silly inquire magazines, you know. It does make you wonder, is something going to happen? But I doubt it. You never know. But yeah, they're fun to watch. <laughs> Last one. Actually, we're going to do the center too, and I'll show you what we're going to do. I've definitely missed you guys all week, though. I'm sorry I haven't been on my social media as much, and uh, I was there in the background. I just. And I was reading everybody's lovely comments. Um, you guys all rock, really. I. Even if it's a small group of, like, people that are constantly watching my videos, you guys, you know who you are. And, uh, thank you so much for just giving me the time to do this. It really means a lot to me because it's hard work doing this sometimes. There's a lot of times where, you know, as an artist, I have an artist block and I don't know what to do. Even I had made a video prior to doing this. And I still have it, which is going to be something for the future. But um, I, it's so hard to, like, just balance everything in life. At least for me it is. I have two small kids, and I want to be there with them, and then I, I want to do this too. And I want to do so many different things. And sometimes when you have a writer's block too, like an artist block, it's just you don't know what to make. You don't know what to do. And I'm always trying to pride myself into doing unique and different projects, not the same old, because that gets so boring. And you know that. It's so boring. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. I'm rambling on. I've been so sick and sick of talking to the walls in my room, so I'm talking to you guys too much. <laughs> and I promised I would give my voice a rest. All right. Cut it off. Let's see. We're going to do something in the center. So this is our totality. All right. We're going to go, I'd say, hmm, I think we're going to go the third one out. No, this one. This one right here. So if you did the center circle, okay, which I left out, it'll be one, two, three. The third one. Mine's two. So focus on that circle. The stuff inside, we're actually going to erase. So don't worry about it. Same dotting tool. I'm going to dot a row around that perimeter circle, okay? Again, I'm just trying to center my dots with the line as I go around. I'm doing it on the line. That one's crooked. There. And just try to be as steady and consistent with your size dots the best you can. Mine don't look perfect either, so we're all in the same boat. If they were all perfect, a computer or something machine would have made it, right? And we don't do that. Almost done. Yeah, see, it's coming along. This looks cool. You 
Ooh, my whistle, I think my nose is like whistling. Hmm. There we go. Now we have our circle here. So if we show you up close, that's what it should look like. Now, I can do one of two options. Because I want this portion to dry before I start my brush stroke, I can go in and work on these, on the outer parts. So what I want to do is I'm going to go with, I'd say, uh, two being my largest size dot. So I'll play around with this being the largest dot. I'll do a couple of these. I'll do a couple of these and then I'll fill in with the smallest one. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go in with the largest size first. So go in with your white. I'm going to start with the inner part. So just dot. And this is just going to be random. I only want a few in that really thin one. And then I'll start tapering out. Now, because you have this guideline here too, you can always place the large ones or any kind of dots on that guideline. Or you can place them on the vertical lines, like that. So you can see I just did that. So I have one on this line, and then I did one on that line. Okay. Or just in a random negative space too, it's fine. I do like these lines. I think it helps with just keeping a little bit neater and not so cluttered. I'm just doing a couple. As the gets bigger, I'm going to add a couple more bigger dots. But all in all, we will just want them to be nice and neat. Do one more over here in this corner. So there's my big dots. I could do this side, but I think I'll do this side at a time lapse and then because I'm really just mirroring the same thing. I'll clean off my two. I'm gonna flip it around and do one and a half. I do need to add a little bit more white to my tray. Kind of scrape in the bottom here. If you don't have titanium white, you can always use cool white or even warm white. Because this is a cool palette going on, I wanted to use titanium white. It's the most real, natural white you can get. But they do sell cool white, which might have a little bit of a blue hue to it, or warm white, which is on the warmer side. So one and a half. And this is all we're going to do. And I'm just going to make sure that I'm keeping some nice space between these. Not getting too close to the outer, these outer parts. No. Really paying attention to the negative space that I'm working with. You don't want to clutter this so much that they're like dots are bleeding into each other. And I think that's what I'm just trying to say in this. So that's done. Now I'm going to get out my 1 and my 0.5. This is the smallest dotting tool. Again, couple random size number 1s. Nothing crazy. Just a couple here and there. If you start getting white dots on your thing, it's okay. We can always go back through it and paint over those. I wouldn't worry about it. It's always going to happen. I have it over here too. So again, I'm just filling in these negative spaces now where I feel like there's 
more than other spots. Okay, so that's coming along nice. You see how that filled in. Now, with the extra negative space, so all in here, I'm going to use the tiniest one and just get a tiny bit on there. And I'm just going to start randomly placing some small dots. Even if they taper off and get really tiny, that's okay. We just want to fill in these spots. Now, remember, it's okay to have some of the blue showing through. You don't want to cover it up completely. And this is really the same thing that we did for the Tree of Life, like I said. Um, this is a good way of making something very dominant in the shape, but also still using the, the dotting technique. You're not filling it in, you're not painting it in. You're filling it in and with the illusion of from a far distance it's that shape, which is cool. Is anybody familiar with the artist Chuck Close? He was an artist in the 80s, I believe. Maybe even the 70s. I was born in 1980, so. And he did a form of pointillism where he had and he did his out of color swatches. The color swatches were about this big and there would be hundreds of them, even just thousands, on a huge, large canvas. I'm, and I'm talking 10 feet hanging on a massive wall. And they were nothing but colors. So it was like when you look at something on an image and you zoom in so much that you just see the pixels, the squares of what makes that image because that's all that really is that's what everything is it's just pixels but when you would stand away it would look like a photograph and when you got up close it would be all these squares and just different colors i was always so fascinated by that type of technique on how that could be achieved it really is neat. I think he was, he is and one is one of my most favorite uh, type of artists out there. But uh, if you ever get a chance to go to a fine arts museum, I know he had a lot of work in the MoMA in New York City. And that was where I first saw his work and it just blew me away. Okay, so I think I'm done here. So there we go. So you can see how that is achieved. It's very simple. There's not much to it. You just want to make sure that you fill these in. So I'll do this on a time lapse. <clears throat> but this is dry now, so let's get into doing our brushes. I'm going to get out my square brush. This is just the square tip, like fine. You don't want to get that coarse kind of bristles. You want a nice, fine nylon, krylon type of brush. Okay, these are suitable for using in acrylics. The more coarse ones are usually used for oil paints, just so you know, okay? But something smooth, something flat, and I'm gonna go into my white. Now, I'm not gonna wet my brush. I wanna keep it dry. And I'm just gonna dip like the tip of it, just like that, all right? I'm gonna wipe some of it off. And then with a dry paper towel, I'm actually gonna take it and I'm gonna wipe it. Like, so there's barely anything on here. And then I'm going to take my corner like this. I'm going to hold it up against where the dots are. 
and I'm going to flick it away. I'm going to do it the same in the side, other side, like, and it creates this like really nice wispy effect. So this got a little bit too much there, but that's okay. I'm also working on a wet paper towel versus dry. So yeah, make sure you get a dry one. And lightly, you just want to pull out. And this is actually going to create these really cool, like, sun rays. And the effect we're trying to achieve here is when the solar eclipse is in full totality. You can even go right through this, even over here. It's okay. You just want to come pull out like from there. I feel like I need to clean that up a little bit. What I can do is take some sandpaper to that, which I think I might, just because it's really dominant there. You want to do this very lightly, very gently, hardly any paint, and just pull out. I'm barely putting any pressure on my brush too. And with this square brush, you'll get this beautiful effect. Now I call this dry brushing. I know it, dry brushing is a little different. It's not exactly this, but realistically, that's what we're doing. We're not using wet. The bristles aren't wet. So I call it dry brushing. I don't really know. I don't think there is a method. Maybe there is. I just don't remember what it is. So that's all we're going to do is start lightly creating this cool effect. Okay, see? And as I go out, I'm going to do a little bit more dominant. So I'm actually going to keep that. I'm going to do another layer because the totality, it's dark, right? Because the moon is in front of the sun. And when it's in front of the sun, you have the rays coming out behind it. And that's the illusion we're trying to achieve here. So that's all I'm doing is just trying to make that from here to here. I'm trying to really just make it a little bit more dominant and then here it just tapers out. This is looking cool. And I like just adding these extra painting techniques to our mandalas. We don't always have to just do swoops and swipes and dots, and we can incorporate some really fun painting techniques to these things. So there we go. There's our totality. Now it looks a little weird because you got this in there, but once you erase that, it'll look nice, trust me. There we go. Perfect. I am going to get, before I forget, I'm going to get some sandpaper. And I am going to sand this just a little bit. The paint might also be a little wet, so.
There we go. Okay. So I'm done with that. I'm going to clean the brush off. Good. Now we're done with our brush. We don't need to use this anymore. So there we go. There's our... So this next portion I think I'm just going to do on my own and then I'll meet you back here. But I am going to do this. I'm going to finish these. Okay guys, so I'm back. I finished this side portion of it. I even went ahead and removed the guidelines in the center so you could see a better understanding of the, the whole cool uh, totality and the wispiness and the of how it's going to look, okay? That's our first portion. We got that down. Now we're going to work on our outer perimeters here, okay? I'm going to get out my monochromatic paints. I'm also going to put a little bit of the actual color into my paint tray. And I'll probably dilute it just a little bit with one drop of water. If you want to use pouring medium, go right ahead. And I'm going to mix that up. And like I said, we have the eight planets now, so we want to get four on one side and four on the other. Now, because I did a 16 segment, and I am technically using up this <clears throat> center point because I have these uh, moon faces here, it really only leaves me with six lines right here on either side and then these two are being occupied. This is also being occupied because you have this moon phase going into the line, if you can see it. This one as well. I have one, two, three, four, five. Five lines here. Now, if I took away the middle, I have one and two, and one and two. I have four, and I figured that's what we're gonna go with, okay? But your middle line you're not going to touch. You are going to do something to it, but it's not going to have a planet color on it. If anything, we're going to add some gold accents to it, and I think that's what we're going to do. This, These two lines here, these two lines here, are going to be where our planets go. So let's do those first. It doesn't really matter what kind of, I don't know, it doesn't matter what order you want to put them in, I'm probably just going to go in the order that is from the sun out, work my way out. So let's just do Mercury, Venus, and then we'll do Earth and Mars together. And then over here we'll do the outer layer. So we'll do Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and then Neptune. And then I think that'll look good. Let me show you how we're going to do this. What I like to do, I use the center part of my tray because I don't really need a lot of this. So all I do is get a little bit of one color, so it's super tiny, not a lot. And then I get a little bit of the other one, and I put them right next to each other. They can even bleed into each other, it's okay. With my water marble tool, I take them and I kind of start doing figure eights and I get it to where they're just enough marbleized to see how that looks. So when I dip my tool into it, it's going to look like that. I'm going to go with a rather large dotting tool. So I'm going to go with the number nine. And I'd say probably about where this second moon is. He's falling on this line right here. That's faint. I know we did cover it with this totality coming out, but that's okay. We can still cover it. I don't know exactly how many lines that is because we painted over it. One, I'm going to guess one, two, three, fourth line out from that. And all I'm going to do is lightly dip that in. And then on this line, we're going to put that dot. I'm going to center it with the cross of this and this. So if you can see, 
It's got, I gotta do one more little bubble, I think, because it, we don't have a nice top dot there. We don't have a nice bubble. So we're just gonna pull it and then dot it. And be very gentle with this one because you want those colors to be swirly looking. And I can even take my tool and lightly move it around. If I want some more, I can even take some like this and add it to it. There we go. So there is my Mercury. We'll show you up close. There's Mercury. Now we'll do Venus, same size dotting tool. So we're going to go with our purple and our periwinkle. Same technique guys, small dot and small dot. There we go. And pull them two together. That looks neat. And I'm going on the next line right here. And there we go. There's Venus. Venus, I have to spread out a little bit because she's got the little bubble in the middle. But she does have some nice marbleization there too. Remember, we're going to skip this center line, so we're going to turn it so that we're right here. Now we're going to do Earth. So I'm going to go with my Indian Turquoise. This is like a light blue almost. It's, I guess it's on the turquoise spectrum. I think it's more like a light blue though. We're gonna go into our green. And again, I'm gonna do my figure eights and swirl. I have more green it looks like than blue here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue on top of that green. Because let's face it, most of our planet is water. There we go. Okay. And just make sure you're on the same line. Awesome. This looks cool. All right, so there's Earth. Lovely home. And then we're gonna get out our red. So Mars is just gonna be red. We could add a little bit of copper maybe. Let's do a little copper with it and see how that looks. Might actually look really neat. So we'll do a little bit of red. And then this is optional because I know I didn't put in the beginning, but if you have the deco art metallics in the copper, get a little bit of copper out. And just do a tiny little bit on the top. Like so, you see a little bit, and then swirl those two together. Ooh, yeah, that looks cool. I love playing around with paints and experimenting, and it's always a lot of fun. And there we go. There's our Mars. Now I know they're all supposed to be different sizes, but eh, we're doing a mandala. And I think it's gonna look really cool this, this way. Cool. Awesome. Now flip it around. Now we're gonna do these side, 
the same as that. Let's remember, we're gonna skip there. We're gonna do these two lines, not that one. Let's do, what's the next one? Jupiter. Let's do orange. So I got bright orange. And so we did orange and then I'm gonna add some honey brown to it. And I'm just gonna swirl those around as well. You don't want to mix it 100%. You want to be able to see those swords moving around, right? So in my number nine tool, and again on the same line, so make sure you're following around. Let's do the Jupiter. That's one good way of doing it too, is take your dotting tool if it's a large one push it like that so it picks up some of the paint and then from the side you dot and then that pulls it away and you can get a plumper dot that way too. I'm just trying to be careful not to mix the paints too much because I like the swirl effect. So there's Jupiter. Now we got Saturn. So our yellow. So our saffron yellow. And with the saffron, I'm also going to do a little bit of the honey brown. Come on, honey brown. <laughs> there we go. Tiny little dot. We have to retire that guy. And remember, figure eights is the best way to mix them couple times, that's all you need to do, into our nine, and Saturn, there we go, cool, I'm wondering if I should do rings on the Saturn, mm -hmm. I'm not so sure yet. We'll see. We'll come back to that. For now, we'll just do the dot. I know if I did the rings, it would give it away and you would know what it was. Not sure if people are gonna know what it is, but that's art and we don't have to explain everything, right? So hopefully they get the gist of it. Uranus and Neptune. Turquoise and white. I've got my Indian turquoise and my titanium white. Little figure eights. the right one. And then the last one is Neptune. Neptune's going to be the darker blue, so we're going to go with Sapphire. And a tiny, tiny little bit of purple. In fact, so I'm not wasting my purple, I'm gonna pull it from this other one and swirl it in. And I really only want a little bit, not a lot. Okay. Let's clean this guy up too because he's a big bubble in the center. We want him to be a little bit more spread out. Mm 
Okay, that's done. There we go. So we have all of our eight planets surrounding the magnificent totality happening. Voila. Now we can start filling in some spots. So I'm going to get out my champagne gold. I think that's a little it's tacky. I'll just use another spot. Okay, let's see. Now remember when you're mixing these, you don't want to use something metallic, so use plastic. Don't use one of these, and don't use one of these to mix. If you add some liquid pouring medium or water to that, only because it will actually change the oxidation of the metallic paint. You'll notice it looks like a little bit more swirly looking. It always happens to me, and I've noticed that. So I always mix my metallics with something plastic. So now, I was thinking about doing something in the center. However, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to approach this one just yet. I think first what I want to do is I'm going to do a series of walking dots in this little area and then we'll start tapering out from there. I think what I want to do is one small area of clusters of stars that are around this. I'm going to use the S2, smallest one I have for the happy dotting. And underneath the next line here, I'm going to dot, and then I'm going to walk the dot up and around the planet Jupiter. I'll do the next one for Saturn. In fact, what I think I'm going to do with Saturn, once it's fully dry, I'm going to either get a gold metallic marker, or even like my water tool, or a very fine brush, something super tiny like a detail brush, with the gold and make a very faint ring around it. Just a little tiny detail. Nothing crazy. Alright, so now I'm moving on. started with Mercury and this is just a simple walking dot around the, the, the larger dot I like the smaller ones like this versus if I use the larger because I want to look at the planets. I don't want to be looking at the gold, really. That's just my added extra accent to it. I want you to see these and stand those out. Now I'm going to keep moving my way down, so we, we're going to eventually come back in and do some things here, but we're going to start working out. So the next line down, if you can see, this walking dot kind of fell a little bit before this line here. So I'm going to start on this line right here. Nice fresh open space right in here. 
and what we're gonna want to do is just probably do a nice little border of some either we're gonna do gold or we're gonna do the walking dots I think we're gonna do some walking dot or just regular dots sorry but we'll do something that fits within these circles so I think a size 5 would be ideal and I'm gonna go in with the same color that's my background I know it sounds weird but it gives it nice texture and we'll probably want to eventually go over it anyway with the top dot of our mica color so I'm gonna go in with the darker hue so this is the Prussian blue it's such a nice rich dark tone too it's perfect for this and again right here I'm gonna start so I can start on this side and I'm gonna work my way around until I get to here about that line so I don't want to get too close to there so I'm gonna start about there with my dot and we're just gonna try to stay within that region of that quarter inch marking There we go. So that's that. We're gonna flip around to the other side. All right, so we're done with that. Now, I'm gonna start going in with my colors now. What I think I wanna do is, I've got some play now with these lines coming out. Now, I could just simply do a bunch of dots and go all the way around and call it a day. We wanna get a little fancy with this one we have so much beautifulness going on here and I know you want that to stand out so we, you know you don't really want to be paying attention too much of this but we got to do something because our mandala looks unfinished so I'm thinking what we can do is do some of these kinds of dots but with gold and then walk our dots with some of them and then do some swooshes with the brushes I think with the gold we're not going to go as big with those sizes 
only because it really limited you to how many walking dots you could do to fit in this kind of area. So saying that, a size 5 is about half the size of the 9. And I think that would probably be ideal. Maybe a 5.5, a, a little bit bigger, because we want it to be large, but not too large. Let's try 5.5. We're going to go into our champagne gold. And on, I'm not doing this line here. I'm going to do this line right here. And I'm going to dot on the next intersection crossing here. I'm going to dot right here. Now, if I did every other one, it would actually work out perfect. So we're going to do one here. We're going to do one in the center. We're going to skip this line. And we're going to skip this one and do this one. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, I'm going to do the center. I'm going to do this one. And this one. Perfect. There we go. Now we can start doing some walking dots. So I'm going to get out this dotting tool. And I think what I want to do, oh, hang on. I got some gold here. I want to clean that up a little bit. It's, it's a little messy. I don't know how that happens. Am I the only one that always has to deal with that? Uh, maybe not. I always get lots of paint splatter. I must move. All right, now we're gonna go into using our monochromatics. What I wanna do, I'm gonna do a series of walking dots and then we'll probably do some swoops to, um, you know, frame them out with our brushes. Um, so I'm gonna go with the dotting tool, the happy dotting tool, size four. I was gonna originally do the S2, but I feel like we need to go bigger with this one. So I'm gonna go with the S4 to start with. And it doesn't matter which one you start on. We're gonna do this for each of these gold dots though that were surrounding this area. And so I like to just stabilize my mandala so that it's eye level with my body. So I'm gonna be working on this one right here. So this is gonna be straight on with me. I am going to go in with <clears throat> the number one shade. So this is like the darkest one we would have. Yours may vary and that's okay. Remember that we don't have to have this look perfect. It's just that I kind of went one from one to six. And like I said, I just add a little bit of white as I went mixed each one. So we're going to go with the darker one. I'm not going to load it up too much. And I'm just going to dot right below and then I'm going to walk my dot up and around. I'm not going to go inside there, it's too much. Just up to that. So it'll look something like that. I'll do that for each one first. since I already have my dotting tool loaded with this color. If you find your dots getting a little bit 
too large as you go up, just clean your dotting tool. Mine did a little bit on that one, but it's not too noticeable. Here we go. So that's done. Now I'm going to go with the same dotting size tool. <clears throat> We're going to go into number two. And again, right below it, the next line, right here. And then actually this part, I'm going to dot, and then I'm going to dot again, go in, dot, then walk up. Because I don't want my dots too small. So these three base dots here should be the same size. So one, and then dip in, then dot, then walk. Same over here, dot, walk. There we go. Clean off our tool. <clears throat> Again, you know the drill, you know how to do this. Let's go into number three. Clean up my messy dots <laughs> that fall. <clears throat> so I'm going into number three now. Same thing, same process. Next line down. This time around, I'm going to do like my Mickey ears. Then I'm going to dip in again. Then I'm going to walk. And I do this just so that my dots at the top part that are tapered have a more consistency in size. If instead of them looking really teeny tiny like these gold ones did, they're still semi plump as they go up. And that's only because I keep these sizes the same. And then I walk it halfway up. And that's how you can get that nice look to it, that nice plump dots. Again, I'm doing one, two, and then three, and then walking it. And I only go as, so far as that. I don't want my top dot up here, the, the last one, to be overlapping that dark blue that I did. I want to stay away from trying to do that, hitting it. So I go as far as I can and then I stop. There we go. So this looks really neat. From a distance it looks nice. It's different. I think we're gonna do, should we do one more color? Should we do brush strokes? Oh, let's see. Yeah, I think we'll do brush strokes. 
All right, because I have three colors left. I did three and three. That might work out better for me. Plus, I still want to do some things at the bottom here. We're done with this. Let's get out four. And I'm going to get my brush out. Like I said, I don't know if I'm going to use the small one. Let's dip in some water and see how it'll look if I do the small one. I also want to do a dot at the bottom here so that I can go down here and go up. Not terrible. So that's how usually I can factor in how I want it to look. That's just water. So let's do the bottoms of these first with some dots just so we can get a better idea of where that swoop is going to land. I'm going to go in with the gold again and I'm going to do a little three tier here. Let me show you. I'm going to use the S4, the bigger dot, dotting side. My dot on the next line like that. Same for this one. And then Actually, I think I just might want to do the gold dot and that's it. I'll call it a day. I was thinking about doing two here as well and making it three. We'll see. Let's do this first one thing at a time. If you notice guys, sometimes I don't have a plan of attack. I just go in and I wing it. This one I'm making, I had some ideas of what I wanted to do, but they all change once I start painting anyway. So I think I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try this little tiny brush because normally I try, the only thing I'm worried about this little one is if you get to the top and you don't get that nice wispiness. To better not confuse you guys, I will go with one of the smaller brushes for the XDT. Okay, and I'll just push that one aside. So I'm gonna go in with number four and I'm using the three zero brush. I'm gonna load it up and get some nice paint on there. And at the gold mark here, this gold dot, I'm going to start my swipe. I'm going to press down and I'm going to pull up lightly. So like that. And then we'll do the other side. Press down. Slowly come up and then wisp out. Do that for all of these. There we go, so that's our first color. That looks awesome. Very cool, very different. Oh, it looked like that. Now, clean off my brush. Now, I'm actually going to go up in a size because I want a little bit bigger. I think in the size zero. Yeah, let's do it size zero for your brush. Open up your five shade. This is going to be the, the one that's closest to the last lighter shade that we have. I'm going to start down here now. Or should I start out here? You know, I'm going to start out here. I'm not going to come down because I want this next row to be workable. So instead of coming down here, the next line I'm going to go up here because I have one more color after that. And that'll actually help us fill in this negative space. With the zero, we're gonna go on the next line up. 
and then we're gonna pull up. It's gonna be a nice little fat guy, like little pudgy one. And that's what I want. This might be a little hard for you because you want a nice tapered look on the top and it is gonna be a little hard to achieve that, especially with a bigger brush, but that's what makes practicing this even more all the better. We have to practice these. I'm wondering how many people out there actually despise using brushes. They're all about just doing dots. I have seen in a couple threads people complaining like, why is it always gotta be swooshes? Why can't we go back to doing dots? When I really don't even know where <laughs> these brush swooshes came from. It's a thing right now. I have to admit, even I'm guilty of using them, but I like it. I find it to be very satisfying. If you're patient with yourself and go slow, then they're really rewarding when you're done. I love them. I like doing them. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes they could be frustrating, but... been trying to come up with new techniques and new ideas to make new designs. I want to start getting into doing some like portraits almost where we're really using the definition of pointillism by adding different colors in our shadows of our faces. Uh, I think that would be an amazing project to work on. A very challenging one, but definitely one that would be a lot of fun. Uh, when I was younger, I used to love to do those where I would do just ink and a very fine tip pen. And I would just sketch out my picture in pencil and then if it was like a portrait, for example, or something that had shadows to it, like a still life. And then with the dots itself, I would do thousands of little dots and you just go over the areas that are darker, you do more dots. So it looks like you're creating this three-dimensional effect of shadowing. And it really teaches you and you understand more about three-dimensional <laughs> like depth and it's a good exercise to do though it's a good way of understanding where your shadows are that's the same thing with drawing too and even with drawing with charcoal i like drawing with charcoal and i used to always call them crepas they're, they're like colored chalks <laughs> all right so same brush we're gonna go in with six last color and again, we're just going to go the next line up. Get a nice amount on your brush. Could probably even get away with mixing a couple more colors to add into there. Maybe we'll do something in there though with our mica color. If you don't have that mica color in, in your case, you can do the metallic blue color. And this last one I'm really just I'm going on the next line up here from this one and when I come to the end I'm not gonna stop next to it I pull in and even if it covers that it creates this curve like it's hugging around the rest of the ones that I had. All right. If you feel like you want to go all the way in, by all means, go ahead. It might change the style a little bit, but maybe it'll add a little bit of a unique flair to it as well. I just don't want to cover up my walking dots, so I'm stopping there. I don't know if anybody had seen that I made a new stencil too. 
obviously no one's obligated to buy anything that I make but I did make a really neat petal type of stencil and it helps with drawing them on and then it helps so that these kind of stay in the same line and I did a variation of different sizes so that you can layer them on top of each other okay so there we go so that's done I'm gonna clean my brush off I would show you this cool brush cleaner that I have but I don't want it, the water to spill everywhere but it was hands down the best investment that I ever did best seven dollars that I ever bought it's really cool oh what the hell I'll show you look voila so I can't tip this because all the water will come out but this is like a little vessel you fill it with water it's about this big and you put it in here and then this fills up and so you clean your brush in here and then when you're done you press the button and that goes down and goes inside this vessel down here and as you do that it fills it up and it knows when to stop the water from coming out really cool and then you have clean water every single time instead of putting it in some mucky yucky cup like this so really cool investment I absolutely love it it was seven dollars on Amazon I need to get a bigger one but I like it because it helps keep my brushes clean this is coming out nice I like it I think in these middle portions I'm gonna do a little bit of a, a swoosh and we're gonna pull it like the old-school way we're not gonna we're not gonna do a brush so I'm gonna use my mica's um, powders for this this is the universal blue I did add a little bit of carbon black to it as well just to make it a little bit on the darker side because I want it to look more galaxy like and as if it's the dark night sky you can use the dazzling metallics blue let me see what color I have so I can show you the dazzling metallics if you have the full set like I do you'll have this color. Now this is ice blue. It is pretty bright considering this. Now what you can do is take some of this and take about a quarter of the black pearl and mix them together and you can get this really nice navy blue shimmery color. That's one way of doing that for sure and that's what I would recommend doing. So I have my own I made I'm telling you, I would definitely invest in mica colors if you're bold and you're brave and you want to make your own paints. Totally try them out because I gotta say, I've made some really amazing colors and they're just out of this world. I love them. I know I have this negative space here and this line, but it's off centered because I'm so close here and I have this. I'm gonna pretend and say like this entire part right here is off limits. I'm not even gonna go near it. I'm gonna go up to this line and that's it. And only because I don't wanna mess with this beautiful piece that I did in the center. That really is like our thing. And anything that's on the outside is really like us looking into deep outer space. Even with these nice swooshes, they give the effect of like a galaxy, right? What a galaxy in the swirls look like. We're gonna stay away from these portions of this area. So these lines that you see, that's your guide to stay away from. So here, and that's it. These two, we're gonna do with this color. I need a cough drop real quick. I keep getting a tickle in my throat because it's still healing. So when I get tired, I tend to cough a lot. <coughs> Excuse me. What I'm going to do is this line right here, it crosses through. I'm going to do a nice little bubble to fill that area. Like so. And then I'm going to take my polar, my water marble tool, 
I'm going to pull down probably about this line here for this one. So I'm going to pull this down. I'm only pulling from the center. I don't want to pull from either side. So just like that. I'll show you up close. See, it's got some nice dimension to it. It's rather high in height hard to show you. So I'll do that and I'll do that one here and here. This one's a little off so the line's a little off so just try to keep yourself centered the best you can when you pull this down. Again we're just pulling down to this line. There we go. Beautiful. And that's a perfect addition. It fills it in. It completes this row, this layer that we just did. And it works. Yeah. Over here I'm going to do this one. And I'll do this one as well. I love using these bottles. They're so much easier than trying to dip the paint and make a nice big bubble when you want to do these pull these swooshes. It's so ideal. I recommend getting bottles for sure. And just fill them. Fill them with a little syringe. That's what I do. I even have those little like these kind of syringes. I have these little things and I fill them with paint and then I just squirt it into the bottle and voila. and they really do come in handy. So that's it. That section's done. Perfect. Looks great. Now we've got to work on this outer part. I think what I want to do, now these I barely can see too, so what I'm going to probably do is go back over these dots with the same color again and do some top dots. I might even mix some of this color with some gel medium and put it in a bottle and then squirt them on those dots that we did because if you see you can barely see them they're so flat and I want some nice dimension in this kind of piece so I could do one of two things put this in a tray with some, so I could put some of this in a tray with some gel and mix it together and then use a dotting tool and dot those. Or I can take that, what I mixed, and put it in a bottle and then the bottle will act as a nice amount of, like all I gotta do is squirt it on then. I like to use the bottle, that's my preference. So that'll be my last step to do this, just so you guys understand what I'm doing. You can leave them as is, you can do whatever you want. You can even do a top dot of a different color just to bring out that little strip there. I kind of like it still the dark because it separates stuff and still is something that's there though. To focus on this part here, I think what we're gonna do is maybe a row of dots just to break it up. And then, I think that'll be it. We'll be done. Let's see. All right, guys. This next portion, we ended on this line right here with this gold dot. And it comes all the way over to here. Now, what I think I want to do is, I'm going to do the bone herring. Is it bone herring, herring bone? <laughs> I don't remember. You get my point. I'm going to use the S2 side and I'm going to go with the lighter colors. So I'm going to go with four and six on these two. So they're a little bit off, but they're still in the lighter shade. So I'll go with four first. And again, I'm going to start at the line here. So we're going to start over here. And all I'm going to want to do is dot at the base and pull up. And then I'm going to go right next to it and do it again. 
and we're gonna repeat this pattern. Let this be part of your meditation and your focus is this nice repetition. Don't make it something that is strenuous and just never ending. Just focus on it. Put some music on and let's just enjoy this portion again. We're gonna go all the way around and I'm gonna go all the way up until I get to this line over here and I'm gonna mirror that over here as well. When I'm done with this color I'm gonna go back to where I started and I'm gonna go into number six with the same tool but I'm gonna start at the top and work my way down. So I'm gonna do a quick time lapse right now of this color and then when I come back I'll show you how to do the number six. So I'm back and I did the first row here. So that looks amazing. <laughs> I really like the way it's coming out. Ah, so cool. Again, it's S2, right? And now we're gonna go in with our number six. So it's the lightest shade we have. And all I'm gonna wanna do for this is I'm gonna dot the top portion that's negative there and pull it down. This one, if you want to take your time with so that you don't mix colors, by all means, go ahead. But that's what we're going to do for each of these. We're going to move this color all the way around. So there is our beautiful design that we did with the two colors. It looks really beautiful and it helped tie in those fancy swoops that we did with the brushes. We still have this nice dominant strip going on. And I think what we wanna do is keep it simple. So we're gonna finish it with some little, I call them like tassels, they're swoosh tassels. You can use the champagne gold by all means. I'm actually gonna go in and use the bliss drops. I like using bliss drops from time to time and I do have this nice Bambi color which is like a sparkly gold dusk looking thing which reminds me of a shooting star and the dust, the gold dust sparkles that come off of it, right? So I'm gonna do some like trails almost of stars, shooting stars. So I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get my bottle and my puller if you want to do this with a dot, dotting tool and pull it, then I would recommend probably using maybe a size, I'd say like a size four. Four would be ideal. And just dot it into your champagne gold and then pull them. I'll show you what I'm going to do with the, this. On each of these lines I have here, I'm going to make a little tassel almost. A little cute thing. I'll show you. The last opening I have here, right here, I'm going to squeeze a dot just so it fills in that area. I'll do that for each of these lines, actually. I don't know if I'm going to do that one or not. I'll come back to that. Let's do these over here. So what I'm going to do with my puller now is I'm just going to take it and pull it up that line. Like I want it to be nice and plump, so you don't want to pull too much. At least with if you're working with these. I'm gonna pull up like so. There we go. I'll do these two lines as well. And I'm gonna mirror this on the other side, remember. We'll pull these up. Now, I'm gonna go the next line up. So right here, the last line that we have. And right next to it, I'm gonna do a dot here and right here. I'm really just trying to focus on keeping them the same size when I squeeze it out of the bottle. 
if you're doing it out of the bottle, just keep that in mind. And at an angle now, so we're gonna curve like this. We're gonna curve that up so that it comes in. I wanna make sure I have a little bit of negative space in between the two. Same with this one. Curve up to the center. Like, and there's my cute little tassel. I can even add one more dot if I really want to. We'll see how this turns out first. And when these dry, they dry like a really nice sparkly gold color. So I think it'll look really nice at the end here. Okay guys, so I'm back. I think I'm gonna add tassels to these as well. I'm gonna go down here. Oop. Only because I think it'll tie it in nicely. I feel like there's too much space going on there. Yeah, that looks good. There we go. Almost done. There we go, guys. So, we finished our mandala. I like the way it looks. I don't think we need much more. Um, you could maybe fill in this little negative space with a dot. Um, maybe like a size eight would be nice. Right in here. That might work nice. Um, just to fill in a little bit more because I feel like it's a little, meh. It's okay, um, yeah. But overall, it looks fantastic. And I like the way it looks. We just have to let it dry and remove the guidelines now, okay? And uh, keep in mind that when you're gonna varnish, if you're gonna do a, a finish, make sure it's a gloss or a satin because if you do matte your sheen for your metallics will disappear it will completely give it a coating and it won't make it shine it'll dull it immediately so keep that in mind guys please let's come back to this and we'll finish it out with a nice shiny varnish and we'll be done guys so we're finished with our piece i went ahead and i removed the guidelines and I used some of my Prussian blue, which is the base color. And I mixed it with a little bit of the matte gel medium.
and a little tiny bit of water just to make sure that the paint isn't peaking when I pull it out of the bottle. And I just put it in this. You can use a dotting tool if you like, but I did want some nice plump dots and you can see these are very high raised and that's what I want is the nice texture of it. So that's going to finish out that portion of it as well. I like that the mica powders are nice shimmery and the bliss drops really helped pull through on that border. So it looks really beautiful. The last thing we want to do, obviously I'm going to let these dry and when I come back I'm going to use a gloss varnish. Remember you want to use gloss when you have metallics because it can dull them down if it's not gloss. So you can either use Liquitex gloss or you can use the DecoArt DuraClear or even if it's something that you want to spray. If you use Mod Podge I would consider using a gloss or a satin. And, but I like to brush it on or roll it on. So that's going to be our last step for this, but this is our project and we are finished. I will show you at the end of the video what it looks like completely done. And I want to thank you all for joining me. This was a super fun project. Obviously, if you are in the path of totality on April 8th, have a great time and enjoy seeing this beautiful phenomenon happen. It is almost uh, a very lucky time to be able to see these types of things. Remember that this totality and any kind of solar eclipse does help create and spark creative mindset for artists and musicians and anyone that is interested in the arts. It has been linked to that. Get your creative brains out and start making some beautiful mandalas and hope this inspired you to do something as well. Uh, all the things that you'll need for this obviously are in the description and you can check that out. But happy celestial, happy solar day, <laughs> solar eclipse day, and thanks guys for joining me again. If you can hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already, that would be awesome. We love to see you here in the community. As always, share on social media and Facebook groups and make sure you tag me in them, get my name out there. And I appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye.